The late 19th century was the heyday of European colonialism. You couldn't be considered a serious European country if you didn't have colonies in Africa or Asia. We talked about what European greed led China to in the previous video. In this video we will talk about how Ethiopia managed to become the only unconquered country on the Black Continent. And this story begins in Italy in 1861, where the Risorgimento takes place and the fragmented Italy is finally united into a single state. The newly created European state is not alone. At the same time, Comrade Bismarck completes the unification of Germany, and the German Empire enters the race for colonies. We will talk about German colonies another time. Today, Italy. Alas, by the time Italian colonization began, the race for Africa was already in full swing, and almost the entire continent was divided among Europeans. The last free country was Ethiopia, and so in 1869 Italian priest Giuseppe Sapeto buys the first colony for Italy. A small plot of land, 6 by 6 kilometers, with a port in Eritrea. Nobody cares about this purchase. The whole Europe is celebrating the opening of the Suez Canal, and nobody is interested in Italy. In 1882, these lands are transferred from the priest to the Italian government, and Italy is quietly included in the race for Africa. In the same year in Sudan, begins an uprising of radical Islamists, who knock the British troops out of the region, and the British lion becomes busy. At this time, the Italians are actively exploring the local region, setting expeditions and gradually expanding their colonies in Eritrea. The Italians also began the peaceful colonization of Somalia, essentially just bribing local rulers, as the local states were already extremely poor due to the lack of natural resources. Italy planned to build ports in Somalia and trade heavily through the Suez Canal. However, I mentioned Sudan for a reason. Britain had some difficulty suppressing the Islamist rebellion, so it made treaties with Ethiopia and Italy to help suppress the rebellion in exchange for small territories in Eritrea. By small territories, I mean the fortress of Masaya, which was promised to both the Italians and the Ethiopians. Typical Englishman. This conflict was the beginning of the confrontation between Italy and Ethiopia and culminated in the little known Zero Italian Ethiopian War of 1887. Already then, Italy was not on its best behavior, and therefore made an alliance with the ruler of the Ethiopian province of Shoah, who wanted to overthrow the Emperor Johannes. In a trouble, Johannes tried to negotiate with the Sudanese Islamists, which did not work out as they considered Christian Ethiopia no better than Christian colonizers. And at the same time with Britain. Britain guaranteed the transfer of the fortress of Messiah to Ethiopia, however, there is a nuance. The Italian took the fortress by force without firing a single shot, with the tacit consent of Albion. During the Zero War, when Johannes died of an injury in the war with Sudan, there was a cope by Menelik, the very ally of Italy who signed the Treaty of Uchal. This treaty is perhaps one of the most arduous cases of fraud and substitution in the history. The treaty drew the border between Ethiopia and Eritrea, which is still in force today, but gave Ethiopians the right to use Eritrean ports, duty-free, declared religious tolerance, peace between Italy and Ethiopia, and blah blah blah. All that would have been fine, but the 17th paragraph of the treaty was written in Amharic as follows. His Majesty, the King of Kings of Ethiopia, can use the government of His Majesty, the King of Italy, for all treatments that did business with other powers or governments. However, when translated into Italian, the word can was replaced by agrees, which changed the whole meaning of the sentence. That is, from the point of view of Ethiopia, they received an ally, which in case of what will help to solve the international problem. And from the Italian point of view, Italy received a protectorate. Such cunning could not lead to anything good, and Menelik in 1893 broke the treaty, and two years later, the Italian corps of 20,000 people invaded Ethiopia. The curse of war itself is not interesting. The Italians invaded, suffered several defeats, then were destroyed at Edua, after which they made peace with small reparations. It is much more interesting to discuss the reason for Ethiopia's victory and the reasons for Italy's defeat. Let's start with the first. When Italy invaded Ethiopia, of course, as European colonizers should, they expected to encounter scattered tribes of barbarians with bows. Well, admit it, you are probably also think that the Italians were defeated by savages. Uh -uh. Ethiopia was a centralized state, so it was able to mobilize an army of 100,000 men. In addition, the Italians were surprised to discover that the Africans had, well, bit somewhat outdated, but rifles and even artillery. Where did all this come from? Here one country intervened, which was hard to expect in such a situation. Russia. Although Russia had essentially dropped out of the struggle for Africa, it still had some ties, particularly with Orthodox Ethiopia. 
However, there is also a foreign policy factor. It's complicated. Watch my hands. Italy was allied with Germany and Austria in the Triple Pact, which was feuding with Russia over Serbia. Russia was also part of the Entente, an alliance with France, which also supported Ethiopia. Another reason for French support was that Italy was supported by Britain, which was also in competition with Germany, but all differences with the French were not forgotten. Britain supported Italy because it was competing with French Djibouti, and Italy's takeover of Ethiopia would not give the French any new lands. Unravel this tangle of foreign policy contradictions as you wish, but I'll come back to Ethiopia. Russia supplied Ethiopia with weapons and also sent PMC Wagner <coughs> Cossacks to train the Ethiopian commanders. Plus, Ethiopia still has the very rifles that Italians gave Menelik for the call. Shoot yourself in the knee, my dears. All in all, Ethiopia won, although it did not prolong the conflicts and did not invade Eritrea or Somalia. However, why did Italy lose? Sure, Italy is famous for its inept army, but it couldn't have been that bad. Let's start with the Risorgimento, and more specifically with a man named Francesco Crispi. He actively participated in the Italian Revolution and even convinced Garibaldi to undertake his Sicilian campaign. And after the country's unification, he was appointed Minister of Economy. However, it turns out that teaching Italians to make bombs and being an economist are different things. And his inept economic policy led to an economic crisis. On the one hand, he introduced a protectionist laws, restricting the country from foreign capital. And on the other, a progressive tax, thus strangling Italian industry. At the same time, the abolition of tax for workers, huge social programs and generally open sympathies of crispy for socialism only make the situation worse. The situation worsened under Prime Minister Giovanni Giolitti, under whom a scandal broke out around the Bank of Rome. It turns out that the bank was illegally printing money to launder funds of certain people from the government. Giolitti himself was not involved in this, but knew about it very well, just hid it. Because of this, he was forced to resign, and the economic bubble in the Italy burst. As a result of the elections, Crispy became prime minister again and suppressed the socialist uprising in the south of the country. And later banned the Socialist Party of Italy, recalled that he was originally a supporter of socialism, but changed his mind, so to speak. Also, Crispy was against the campaign in Ethiopia, but changed his mind again, and it was under him that the first Italo-Ethiopian war began. And here's where it gets interesting. Due to economic problems, the Italian finance minister asked Crispy to not fully arm the army, to which he agreed it genius. Total. The army, understaffed because of the economic crisis, numerically outnumbered, underestimating its opponent advanced Ethiopia and meeting there a large, armed, solid army with commanders trained in modern warfare. This was the cause of Italy's defeat in the war. The consequence was Crispy's resignation and international disgrace. However, it cannot be said that it hit Italy so hard. Eritrea and Somalia remained colonies, and in 1911 Italy captured Turkish Libya and got another colony. I will make a separate video about it at some point. After Italy will enter the First World War on the side of Entente, we will get nothing from it and on the background of this Benito Mussolini will come to power, who will start Second Italo-Ethiopian War. Thanks for watching, leave a like, subscribe to my channel and write in the comments what you'd like to see a video about. Also, join my Discord server at the link in the description.